In this tutorial, I want to talk about the importance of markers. Now, sometimes people think that markers, well, they're just you know, something that you can do and they're not really very important, but actually they're extremely important and very valuable. They're great for navigation, they're great to help you to know when to make edits, and they're great for passing notes on amongst people. So say I come to this particular part here and I'm going to click and I say, you know what, this needs a bit of color correction. Well, if I hit the M key on my keyboard, M, it adds a marker and I can make a comment. So I can do color, that's a British spelling by the way, it's not a spell mistake. We add a U in it for some stupid reason. Color correct this shot. Enter. And notice that it stays there as a mark. And if I want to get to that marker, if I'm anywhere else, so say I'm down here, all I need to do is hit one on my keyboard, that's the main part of my keyboard, and I go straight to one. By the way, this is not the number pad. Okay, don't use the number pad. If I do one on my number pad, you'll see that it's actually shifting the selected clip and beginning to give me a cross fade. Okay, and three, incidentally, moves it back the other way. And I've gone too far now. I'm getting this wonderful feedback here that's telling me whether I'm absolutely in or out. So just bear in mind that using your number pad isn't the answer for markers. So if you've got to make comments or you're playing something through your client, your client says, oh, could you do this? Could you do that? Whack in a marker, put a comment on the marker, and then when your client's gone, you've saved your project, all the markers are there with all the comments that you need to be able to go back and make the changes that need to take place. And also, if you're working with multiple people using Sony Vegas Pro, you can actually exchange project files between people. As long as they've got access to the media, they've got access to the markers, they can see what needs to take place and go away. But I'm going to show you one other really important use for markers. So I'm going to control Z to get rid of this particular marker. Okay, so I haven't got a marker, but what I do have, I'm going to go back to the beginning, is a piece of music that I want to edit to. And I'm going to drag this down and drop it onto the timeline down here. I want to edit to the beat of this particular clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the clip through and I'm going to tap the M key every time I get to the appropriate beat for an edit point. Now this brings up the issue of editing to the beat and not editing to the beat. If you make your edits happen on the beat, what you'll discover is that people are comfortable. It's what they expect and the edits become invisible really and they don't notice that anything's going on because it's happening at exactly the right time when the beat of the music is taking place. However, if you edit off the beat, you can sometimes make people feel a little bit uncomfortable because to their mind it says you should be editing that, that transition should happen at the beat point and yet it's not happening at the beat point and they feel a bit uncomfortable. So it can be either distracting or if you're doing something where you want to ratchet up the tension a bit or you want people to feel uncomfortable, then you avoid the beat because it's making them ask questions, what's going on here, and putting them slightly off their ease. However, don't always edit at the same distance from the beat. So if you edit a couple of frames before the beat, the next one shouldn't be another couple of frames before the beat. It should perhaps be a few frames earlier or a few frames later. Because when I say edit off the beat, it's not regular editing off the beat, which is just bad editing. It's editing around the beat so that people feel disquieted, uncomfortable, and you're producing that nervy result. So let's just play through this piece of music and actually add in our beats. So Alt-0 makes sure that I've got the timeline selected. It is selected, the cursor's flashing, so I know I'm there. L plays forward, and M is going to add my markers in. I'll stop the playback and uh, do a few of these and come back to you in a minute when they're more done. Okay, so that's actually put all of the markers in. So I've got all my markers across the beats. These are the beats that I want to edit. These represent my edit points. Now what you will discover is when you actually trim, you'll find that we get snapping two markers, which makes it very easy to know when you are actually on a marker. So snapping is really helpful, but also you can navigate markers by using the keys on your ordinary number pad. So one goes to one, two, three, four. But when you get to 10 and 11, just type 10, 11, 12, 
and all the way up to 20, so 20. And you'll see that by typing the actual number, the cursor is going to snap to the appropriate marker and you can actually make changes. Now you can also grab hold of a marker and pull it around a bit, so it is possible to move it. But notice it kind of wants to go back to where it originally came from. Let's do it with number 10 here so we can move it around. But when it gets back to where it was originally set, it's saying, Oi, you've moved me, this is where I originally was, which again is a really useful function. So markers are great. Obviously, they're never going to render out. You're never going to see them. But they're a great way of organizing your project, of putting comments in, and of making sure that you are editing to the beat. One last comment about editing to the beat. From experience, you find that about half of editors have a sense of rhythm and half don't. If you don't feel you've got a sense of rhythm that's really going to match the beat, ask somebody else to do it for you. And then don't be proud. Just allow them to add the markers for you, thank them and get on with it. Don't get too hung up if you find difficulty hitting the beat. Just ask somebody who does and don't worry about it. And one last thing, on this particular one, I particularly found this C at the beginning very distracting. I would not turn down the volume of the whole track. All I would do is turn down the volume of the clip so that it becomes far less distracting when we start. So if I take it down to minus 6, minus 7 dB, and then when I hit the home key to go to the beginning of my track, I push play. Let's see if that's less distracting. It's still distracting in comparison to the next shot, but it's certainly a lot better. I might even pull it down a bit more. So that's the use of markers and how they can really help you in your editing to create a really good rough cut. My name's Andrew Davis. I hope you found this tutorial useful and thank you for watching.